This is the Daily Dispatch podcast with your business correspondent, Ted Keenan. Today, Dispatch Live explores one of South Africa's most unenviable choices. Should it support nuclear power or go for coal? Nuclear power is the only option to mass electricity generation if coal were phased out. Unabated coal will warm the planet past the point that humans can survive. On the other hand, a nuclear disaster at Kuber near Cape Town, or at the proposed new site at Taispint near Gebecha, will kill thousands, especially if the meltdowns are on the same scale as the horrific disasters at Chernobyl, Fukushima, or Three Mile Island. It will also render most of the surrounding land unusable, which is very bad news for Cape Town. South Africa is under global pressure to reduce the use of coal. And nuclear may be the best of the worst alternatives. This is one reason for the 40-year-old Kuburg's facelift, which started earlier this year. It will keep it operating for another 20 years. However, is Kuburg safe? Rumours that it is built on a fault line persist. A retired Kuburg veteran is convinced that Kuburg is more than safe and explains why. You learned about nuclear. They put you through courses. You get bent up by the oil, so I had to do nuclear engineering. I was the first Eskimo electrician there. So I was I had to do a nuclear engineering course. How how far was the station at that stage? Were you there at a yes, kilometer and a half about? And no, I'm talking about, more like. Uh, well, was far, it was it running at that no, stage? No, I got there in eighty, and they so they ran up in eighty four the first unit. So you've see, really seen it from from yeah. from foundation up. Yeah. But also, I was a seismologist as well. So I mean, no, I know all about what the station's standing on, what's on the ground, and, you know. And the, the, the threat of earthquakes and that sort of thing, has Eskim, did Eskim do its homework on those sorts of things? Ten years before minimum that they, they start to met, do all measurements of radiation in the area. Um, they'd had that earthquake in 69, but that was nowhere near here. It had an effect, but it was Tobach and all that. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's more dangerous working in a conventional coal station with a high pressure steam. That will cut you in half, and you won't even you won't even see it. Yeah, no, that's for. I'm not worried about it at all. You mentioned that some of the steps that they've taken were constant monitoring of the machines and that sort of thing, and that you went to yeah, UCT job, to yeah. do a course. Tell me a little bit about that course, if you don't mind. No, it wasn't that we had to go to UCT, but it wasn't an actual course at UCT because they didn't know as much as we did. We went, somebody got the bright idea that we should learn more of the mathematics of it. It was kind of, it got right out of hand. Uh, I, I always say the Ferrier's Transform and a few things like that is really top. Maths. But that's how keen they were on us being trained on the vibration side. And, of course, the station comes with vibration um, uh, uh, instrumentations around every about every um, uh, large motor in the containment, you know, so, but then we built on it. You were originally from the UK. Mm. When did you move out to South Africa? 71. And had you already qualified in the UK at that stage? As an electrician. Different to South Africa or, or electricians around the world the same, if you're properly qualified? I don't know. I think I may have said to you when I was driving you home, over there, electrical is uh, and was the highest trade. And under that came fitters and that. But in this country, it's the other way around. And yet you don't, you don't have to sit four years doing maths, that tech. Were you recruited by Iskam in the UK, or did you just no. take a chance and come out Took here? Take a chance, yeah. And were they your first job? Oh, no, no. I worked for Colin Sinclair Electrical Construction. Um, then Eskom, yeah. The problem that 
some people have of being close to Eskom and seeing the tsunamis and that sort of thing. Could that not be a problem? Big waves coming in? No. No, if we've got the, the South Atlantic Fault, but that's not, but there's nothing there that can drop or it, it can't, can't do anything, you know, because it's constantly coming out. But now further north, they're expecting one day a part of the Canary Islands to collapse into the sea and it'll flood New York. Yes. Yeah, but down here, nothing. I, I, they, they sent down the country's top geological survey guy and we went through all the stuff uh, for three days, what all the risks are. And that's why I know about the topography aqua, because it's a huge aquifer under, underneath it, which I think makes the ground, you know, there's water, lake mm. underneath, you know. Um, no, I mean, but see, when, you, when we first started there, they told you everything, you know, and... Um, and there's also what we call the containment building. That's why it's called that. It, it contains everything. Just describe that a little bit, please. Well, this is this is two solid containment buildings, and that's where all all the nuclear uh, stuff is. Anything moving around and <coughs> uh, you know direct to operate the station to make steam. And like I said, it's been designed to have a, a jumbo jet in those days to hit it full speed right into the dome or anywhere you want and it won't do anything to it. Just describe the actual manufacture of that. How do they go about building something that's so shockproof? Well, they had the best quality concrete you could get probably in the world, but, the, but they had to use the stuff the rest of the world used. But uh, it, was, it had to be to such a, a, um, a level of quality that I saw trucks turn away and dump it. And the specifications of that building, starting at the ground floor? It, uh, it's on what they call bearings. <clears throat> I can't remember now how many there are, but uh, the whole station's sitting on. I'm just trying to think now, could I walk in it? Yes, I think I could. Uh, maybe just about two meters high, hundreds of them. And on it is uh, like brass plates and neoprene. And that whole station can move, that whole containment can move. A, half a meter without any pipes being wrenched out or any damage being done. More than half a meter. It's and how big is it? Plus, plus minus. I don't know. Around underneath? And no, the, the whole foundation length. And yeah, because it's, it's only that, as far as I know, it's only the nuclear section and the nuclear treatment stuff. Uh -huh. <clears throat> I don't know. It could be 100 meters by... Maybe about the same. I'm not. I'm, I actually got no idea. I'm just trying to picture it because it's dark down there. Was there a good spirit amongst the people that were working there? Did anybody think, "Whoopsie, I'm, I'm not sure about this"? <laughs> no. Uh, um, at one time, fifty percent of the uh, people working there were British. Fifteen hundred staff, I think, and seven fifty were British. So there's always a lot of camaraderie there. You know, we got a lot of. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> no, um, there were people like myself who came in not uh, having come from another power station. They had to do all the nuclear. Tr You've got to do nuclear introduction courses, and you have to pass nuclear. Uh, um, what's it called? Physics. Um, is it called nuclear physics? No, not um, health physics. Yeah. And you have to do all the courses and learn how to uh, how to read stuff, how to all your badges, how to tape up how to, what to do in an emergency. Everybody's got to do that. And then when I was there, we had then to go on a uh, um, conventional power station course and then in six months in nuclear uh, engineering. So the training was absolutely top class. I think it went off, but they didn't know what to do with me because I was the first electrician, but there was contracting electricians. But they had me, that was the point. And... Uh, after that, um, no, tomorrow I have, tomorrow morning I have coffee with a friend of mine who I bumped into after 26 years and he was on the uh, mechanical side and they all had to do courses and, you know, to know what, the, how it worked. So you couldn't tell people stupid things, you know, um, yep. 
Uh, I can't think of one, but uh, uh, some. I mean, some people think your the microwave is nuclear. I mean, people are. They've got the biggest information in the world that the world's ever known with the internet, and they look at the dumbest places in the world to find out what they want to find out. I mean, would you call a surgeon to fix your plumbing? But that's what they're doing. But oh, my son was diagnosed yesterday with uh, he's positive. With, yeah. So our whole Christmas is bugger. Oh, shame. <laughs> so, the the aspect of the the training and that sort of thing. Did it keep going until you had decided to leave and go into your own business? Um, there was a training department. Um, yeah, you had to do uh, health physics every couple of years to make sure you still knew what you were doing. But each individual department had um, gradually grew into, um, before every job, you had a, a, a briefing about it, what you had to do. You had they had to tick off. You were told that. You were told that. You agreed. You agreed. Uh, in my department, we we used to do big tests, and um, sometimes it five separate people, in different parts of the plant, and we used to go off and rehearse. Didn't just wander away. Oh, we do this, and he'll switch off. No, go away. Does that phone work? Does that phone work? Does you are you up way below ground? Does your radio work? Right now, if if I phone you now. You're at the cabinet. Would you get? Do you know where you're going to read the readings? And, and we rehearsed. And uh, the people who worked on the changing of fuel, there's a mock-up one there, and um, they used because you could. You're only allowed somebody. I make up an amount, thirty-five minutes each man, and they would fully dress up and go into this room and do the whole thing as a full-size head of uh, of. Uh, a lot of the terms that were uh, the reactor. And uh, then they were putting people after people and they said, hell, we didn't get it finished. What are we going to do about it? How are we going to make it better? And old Big Mac would say, okay, then we'll do this and we'll do that. That's just one job. And now apparently, you know, um, and they've got a simulator there. So the, 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 uh, the main people there, the uh, operators, are, I think they have three shifts, one off, and one in training permanently. You go on training so every So continually building up your skills. Well, but not just building up, but um, proving, you know, they could test you the same. What basically what they do is they go into the simulator, which is huge, you know, it's like being in the control room, and they put, uh, they used to have a kettle in there and a the guy had a little fridge, and he, because they'd been in there for 12 hours or whatever the shift is. And, um, uh, then they would make things happen because they, they could see them. They would make someone operate. The guy would look up and he'd know, he knows what he's going to have to do. Now they've got even more procedures. Yeah. My pal said to me, a guy off the street, if he could read, could know how to react to a nuclear event. The n Nuclear is a very emotive issue and you've got a lot of the... Only about people who don't know what it is. Well, that's that, that was going to be my question. If all of the people that belong to the various uh, anti-nuclear associations and bodies, if they were subjected to a two-day course at Cuba, do you think they would probably change their mind if they were open about it? Okay. If it was a person who, who had ideas and thought, really, I don't know, yes, but if it's a person who like, if will not have the job, yeah. then you can't make him do it because his, his brain's not right. If he's a conspiracy theorist, or he chooses, he chooses to, to never be convinced, that's it. There's a but it would work on some people. It would work on, um, say, the, the neighbours I know here because they've never been anti. But they know they know, you know, if they went on a course. There is a, a plan, I don't know how advanced it is because many of the things are, are kept away from journalists, to put a plant up at Taste Pimp, which is within striking distance of PE. If you read about various dirty emissions and coal and that sort of thing, nuclear seems to be a pretty clean energy. You've got to have it. Uh, that's in my opinion. 
that's got to be not a permanent it's got to be part of the uh, emission control but it's very expensive but what are you going to do we're building coal stations i mean the chances are i'm going to be gone before my grandkids can't breathe properly you know mm. so um no uh, we need nuclear there's no doubt about it we Nuclear is the cleanest, even as far as getting it out of the ground. More cold radioactive as well when they're underground. It's, you know, you can't, I've heard, oh yeah, these uranium miners as such, but they get it out of the ground the other way. God's not digging uranium as far as I know. No, it's uh, machines do it. But no, I've got no doubt. We, we're not a good country with water for hydro, um, although we have a few hydro for meat and uh, the one in Gordon's Bay, they're they're fishing. They're yeah. really, you know, it's um, that's okay, but not everywhere can have it. You know. So a a nuclear station, and they talk about more than just another one, should be on the coast because that's where you get your easiest and cheapest supply of cold water. Yes, that's that's the main thing. Uh, cold water, and this water here is cold, as you know. Um, it's uh, rivers they got them in America on rivers but um, and they don't do much harm if they're run properly because you've got a lot of crooked people everywhere you know dumping stuff but uh, the, the sea is the best you, you've got to have it the trouble is the sea causes a little bit more problem than rivers because as you know salt water will always do damage and you've got to keep changing parts but um, yeah the sea See, it's fine, but I'm not. I'm not worried at all. I would have. I would have brought my family up, living in one of the workshops. You know, right on the side. I, there was nothing. I, had, I had less. I was uh, uh, had less radiation there than the first ten years after I left. I've had three knee replacements and and all that. You know, I've had far more radiation in the hospitals. I had not left there with zero. I've got it written officially somewhere in one of my folders. How much radiation I received, and it was no, nothing. But I think was it you? I said to I said it to many people, but you dropped. There was a new. There was a power station on in Pardon Island. Yes, a red brick one. As you got near it, but they didn't call. I can't remember where they. I will just call it a counter. As you got near the station, the needle went up. When you walked in around it, because it's the red brick. It's everywhere, you know. So. Well, I was more exposed to it there. Do you get any of your friends, I know you're an avid bowler, but if you happen to chat about this to the people at the Bowls Club, and they are people, probably most of them your age, do you get a lot of negative responses or are people prepared to listen? Um, I've never any, had anybody come back and say, oh, that's rubbish, no, they don't do that. They've said something and I've said, no, no, it's okay. I mean, it keeps coming up in the paper, this so-called fault coming out from Salt River, the Salt River, across the Pardon Island. It's an invented, across to Robin Island. It's invented. It's an invented. The guy, the geological survey guy, and I believe him, I mean, we got out all the maps and uh, the, all the proper stuff, you know, it's not just a, a map, underground maps. And he said they got this guy from Britain years ago, sometime after the war, paid him a fortune to check, and he couldn't find anything, so they think he invented it. There's no sign of it there, there's nothing, nothing there. But the people in the Bowls Club have said, yeah, there was an earthquake. It's 500 kilometers south of us last year or the year before. Ugh. Come on, the whole world's shaking. I got a, on my computer, I got a list of every earthquake every day. Mm -hmm. And there's hundreds, hundreds all over the world, mm -hmm. you know, people. Um, look, I take sweeteners and I've got friends that they're bad for you. I said sugar's worse. Thank you very much for joining Dispatch Live.